الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we resume from where we left off and that is the tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha and we had reached the very first verse in the Quran which is الحمد لله رب العالمين and this verse is one of the most profound and one of the most succinct verses in the entire Quran. It is a verse that, wallahi, if you were to think and think and think, you could not have thought of a better way to begin the final book of Revelation. And in order to fully appreciate the meaning of this verse, we need to understand what exactly does hamd mean? All hamd belongs to Allah, the Rabbul Alameen. What exactly does hamd mean? And to fully understand hamd, we need to compare hamd with other similar Arabic words. Allah Azza wa Jal could have said, Ashukru Lillah, or He could have said, Al Madhu Lillah, but He said, Alhamdulillah. And the word Alhamd is very different than Shukr, it is very different than Madah. There are other nuances. Nuances. The word shukr, we all understand, even non-Arabs, what shukr means. It means gratitude, it means thankfulness. And no doubt, a shukr is also for Allah. No doubt, a shukr is also for Allah. And Allah wants us to do shukr of Him. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Right? Allah says, you thank me, I will give you more. But shukr is only done in response to a favor done unto you. If somebody lends you money, you say shukran. If somebody gives you something, if somebody donates to your cause, if somebody helps you with his effort, you say shukran. Or you show him thanks, because shukr can also be shown. And that's what Allah says, I'malu ala Dawuda shukra. Show me through your actions shukr. So shukr has to be in return for something. Whereas hamd is not in return for anything. What's the difference between hamd and madah? Madah in Arabic also means praise, but madah could be a false praise, whereas hamd is never false. And madah could be a praise for something beyond your control. For example, somebody can madah your physical appearance, and you did not create your physical appearance. But alhamd is because of something that you are worthy of. So madah is sometimes given and you don't deserve it, it's beyond your control. You praise somebody's looks. In Arabic, you wouldn't say hamida. You would say madaha. You praise something that you really don't mean. It's just a false praise. You want his, uh, his uh, return or something. This is madaha. Alhamd means, Oh Allah, you are worthy of every single ultimate praise because of who you are, not because of what you've given me. Even if you didn't give me anything, even if I didn't exist, you would be worthy of being praised. Not because of what you have done, but because of who you are. And the Alif Lam Alhamdu signifies every single type of Hamd is for. Alhamdu, not Hamdan Lillah, to Allah belongs praise. No, Alhamdu, which means every Hamd imaginable, it is to Allah. And Alhamdulillah, the lamb over here, it is as if the hamd belongs only to Allah. Nobody else deserves hamd except if Allah allows him to be praised. No being is ultimately worthy of praise. All hamd exclusively belongs to Allah and no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, hamd is more specific than shukr. Hamd is more narrow than shukr because hamd can only be done by the tongue. You cannot show hamd, whereas you can show shukr. And hamd is not done in exchange for a favor. Shukr is done in exchange for a favor. Even the non-Arabs, the Indian Pakistani, we say shukriya, right? You do something, we say shukriya because it's a it's something you say when somebody gives you something, when somebody does something to you. Whereas hamd is something you say, not because of what has been given, but because of the perfection of the being whom you praise. So alhamdulillah, and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alhamdulillah tamla ul mizan, hadith in Sahih Muslim, saying alhamdulillah, it fills the entire scales on the Day of Judgment. Simply saying Alhamdulillah fills the entire scales. And Alhamdu, Alhamdulillah, our Lord has used this phrase in so many times throughout the Quran. Allah says when He created the creation, Alhamdulillah illadhi khalaq as samawati wal ard. All praise be to Allah, He has created the heavens and the earth. So Allah Azza wa Jal is praised at all times. 
heavens. To him belongs hamd from the very beginning. And to him will always belong hamd till the very end. To Allah belongs praise wherever you are. To him belongs hamd. Those in the heavens will praise. Those on earth will praise. So wherever you are, whenever you are, hamd is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when you look at the throne of Ar-Rahman, when you see the throne of Ar-Rahman, you will see You will see the angels. They are uh, going around the, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are praising Allah and وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ As they are around the throne of Allah and as they are showing servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be said, the buzzing around the throne will be what? الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And our Lord tells us that the people of Jannah, what will they be doing? دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمْ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ What a beautiful verse in the Quran. That they will always be making dua with subhanallah. And they will be greeting one another with salam. But the final phrase that they will always say, وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ is what? أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So the final thing that they end all of their praise with, the people of Jannah, will be الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And الْحَمْد is due to Allah and Allah exclusively. And no one can praise Allah like Allah can praise Himself. We cannot do justice in praising Allah. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would regularly make a dua to Allah in the middle of the night, in sajda, in prostration. And he would say, Subhanak, how exalted are you, O Allah? لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك. I cannot do justice in giving you the praise you deserve. Now imagine who is saying this. The best human being ever created. The most noble, the most pious. And he is saying this where? In his masjid, which is the second holiest place on earth. When? In the middle of the night when nobody is looking at him. So the one who worships Allah like no one can worship him. When he is in the best posture, in the best masjid, what does he say? Oh Allah, I cannot praise you as you deserve to be praised. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you are too great for me to praise. Only you can praise yourself as you deserve. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. So we praise Allah recognizing our praise falls short of what Allah deserves. We praise Allah realizing that only Allah can praise Himself in a way that is suitable, in a majesty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. And by beginning the Quran with Alhamdulillah, what a beautiful beginning. No deep discussion of philosophy, of the existence of God, of the purpose of life. You get straight to the heart of the matter. All praise is due to Allah. Your purpose in life is to praise Allah. As Allah says in the Quran, I have only created man and jinn to worship me. This is the purpose of life. And so immediately from the get-go, run the first verse in the Quran, all praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillah. And in fact, this was the very first phrase uttered by any man. Our Prophet ﷺ tells us that when our Lord fashioned our father Adam and made him into a human being, he breathed the ruh into Adam. And the ruh was blown in from the head down. And the hadith says, when the ruh reached the nose, it tickled Adam. When the ruh reached the nose, it tickled Adam. When something tickles your nose, what happens? So Adam sneezed. And Adam said, Fitratan, without anybody teaching him anything. The first word that the first human ever said, Alhamdulillah. It just came to him because Allah had ingrained it in his innate nature without any Quran coming down, without any wahi. Man knew. Adam knew that Allah is worthy of praise. So the first words any human ever said were, Alhamdulillah. And of course, when somebody says, Alhamdulillah, what is the response? Yarhamuk Allah. And so the first words Allah spoke to Adam, Yarhamuk Allah, Ya Adam. The first words Allah spoke, Allah will have mercy on you, O Adam. So what a befitting beginning for a book, to begin the book, all hamd is due only to Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And I remember 
A good friend of mine who's a convert, he's a famous convert, he's written many books, Dr. Abdullah Brown. His conversion story, I have mentioned it many times uh, to, to some of you in MIC. And one phrase always sticks in my mind, that he said he was searching for the right religion, and uh, he's going down the list, he's looking at Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, you know, Judaism. Finally, eventually, he gets to Islam, and he doesn't know a single Muslim. And he purchases the Quran from a bookstore, he opens it up, and he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises due to Allah, who is the Lord of every species of creation. Dr. Abdullah told me this, he said, he said, soon as I read that line, I said, this is how a book should begin. This is how a divine book should begin. A message from Allah, it should begin immediately. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of every single creation. He felt an emotion in him that what a way to begin a book. What a way to start the final revelation. You simply state a statement of fact that every single hamd belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we praise Allah in every circumstance and every opportunity. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrates that when something pleased him, he would say, Alhamdulillah All praise is due to Allah through whose blessings all good things finish. And when something would not please him, he would say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. All praise is due to Allah no matter what the situation. Now what is the common phrase in both? Alhamdulillah. We do not praise Allah just when Allah shows us something good. No, Allah is worthy of hamd regardless of our life. Wallahi, if we did not exist, Allah would be worthy of hamd. If He did not create us, He is still worthy of hamd. So whatever comes our way, He is still worthy of hamd. That's what our Prophet ﷺ demonstrated. When something good happened, Alhamdulillah alladhi bi ni'mati salihat. When something bad happened, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. In every circumstance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praised. Never is there an opportunity where we do not praise Allah. And how can that not be the case when Allah says to Him belongs hamd? from the beginning and to the very end and to him belongs hamd in the heavens and in the earth and the angels were doing hamd around the throne and the people of jannah are finishing every conversation with hamd and our father adam began his existence with hamd and the scales are filled with the hamd of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so verily and truly and indeed alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen and we will come back to this phrase alhamdulillah tomorrow and even the day after tomorrow insha'allah ta'ala wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh